All right, how's everybody doing? We're here on a fine Sunday. We got us a new knife in. I, I did show this on our live uh, last night, this BPS knife. This is their camping knife. This right here, it looks like it's the B1CSH, I guess. Made in Ukraine, of course. BPS knives. Saw Grunt had these on the live last week, and um, I had him show them because he, well, he, he had had them in his videos, and I sent him an email saying, hey, if you're going to be on the live this week, can you please show some BPS blades, because they're really interested in them. I've seen a lot of people get these, like, Frank at What's the Point EDC, um, Peter Built Knife Guy, I believe, has got some, so I wanted to have, I wanted him to show them on the live so I could check it out for myself, and, you know, this thing was $33. Got it from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I was buying a new case knife and I was like, well, why not just throw this in there with it as well so I can test it out for myself. Now, if we look here on the tang, it's got, uh, actually on the blade, BPS knives. Carbon steel, 1066, made in Ukraine. Um, now, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not a bad knife. For $33, you're getting the blade, carbon steel, but you're also getting this nice leather sheath. And this thing is not bad, guys. I mean, you look at the leather stock here on the uh, Dangler. You know, you say you got the same stock here, and all in all, it's a pretty good sheath. I'm not gonna lie. For 30, you know, most knife or most sheath make, most leather smiths are probably gonna charge you more than that for this sheath or or a style like this. And I don't know much about leather. My buddy uh, Boston Blade Reviews does, and um, you know, so I don't know what the quality of the leather is. Um, but like I said, I've paid. Well, let's just see if I can get it out. I paid $70 to have a sheath made. Now, we'll just pull it out here. This is a sheath I had made, and it cost me $70. Now, I don't know the difference in the leather. This leather probably is a little more higher quality than this. Just not sure, because I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not a leathersmith. I'm not a professional leather guy, but um, all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this purchase. I, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to see... And we're going to do more than just look at the knife in this video, because if you look, the handle's plain, the sheath is plain, we're going to take care of that. Um, so let's look at the, the length of this thing. It's going to be 9 inches with a blade length. Now this is a, called a 5 inch camping knife, so I, I don't know, it looks like the blade is only, <laughs> the blade's only like 4 and, what are we saying here, I don't know four and a quarter and that don't even count the you know the cutting length's a lot shorter than that just the cutting length we're looking at what three and seven eighths probably just for the cutting length so I don't know it, it was labeled as a five inch camping knife so I don't know but all in all I'm pretty pleased with the purchase it's not a bad knife at all um, we'll check the edge retention here really quick I don't know if I did this on the live or not but let's just see if it's sharp, oh yeah. You know, I haven't done anything to this blade and it just glides right through there. What we have is like a Kephart style blade, Scandi ground it looks like there. Now I have a knife that's very similar to this and that is the Battle Horse Knives um, Smoky Mountain Razor. Look at the comparison of that you know we do have more of a blunt style tip on the Smoky Mountain Razor but you know this one uh, the BPS is a hair longer but I love this style handle because it you know you got it's contoured and with this being wood and I look to see what kind of wood and it just says wood <laughs> so yeah, don't ask me what kind of wood it is it just says wood <laughs> so but yeah you take it off there Hell yeah, I mean, for $33, guys. I mean, smoke and deal. Because this right here, I think it was about $190. Come with this sheath here. You know, I did treat this with open offs, but let's see what she weighs. Actually, let's keep this out. Let's keep the uh, battle horse out. I'm going to uh, try not to cut myself here. I've got these blades just everywhere. So the BPS, I mean, it, it isn't a heavy, heavy knife. 5.25 ounces. Battle Horse 8.2, so man, we're looking at quite a difference there, you know. So let's look at the blade stock too. It is a thinner blade stock, but I mean, how much do you really need, you know? 
This right here is probably, I don't know. I really don't know what that is, honestly, to tell you the truth. But, uh, probably point one five seven over here. I would guess point one five seven. It's probably point one two five. I would guess. So yeah, yeah, I believe this is point one five seven. Sharpened spine. Not as sharp as a battle horse, but you know it'll do the trick. So what I'm gonna do, um, you know, this isn't just all about the knife. You know, showing the knife. I kind of want to show you guys what I do to blades when I get them. You know, to kind of care for them, the leather stuff. So Ken over at Last Chance Knives had me give away the the original wax he had made and sent to me, and he said I'll send you some of my new and old stuff. You know, if you're going to use some for a giveaway. So we got the new, which is uh, beeswax, uh, coconut oil, olive oil. The old stuff is beeswax and coconut oil. Now this is uh, very safe. You know, you can treat your blades with it or whatnot, and you can then use your blade to prepare food. No problem at all. All natural. And you can use a wax like that or, you know, when I buy wax, I just look to make sure it's all natural, like this wax right here. Food grade wax. That's, that's telling you it's safe to use, you know. And I've used this. I've used wicked wax. Um, but, you know, I want to use this stuff Ken sent. What I'm going to do, the new stuff I'm going to use on the sheath. The old stuff I'm going to use on the wood of the handle. And what I did is I had this sheath, knife, and wax outside it's like 92 degrees out so hopefully it's it's pretty easy to work with right now so i'm just going to show you how i do it when i when i use wax so we're going to use the new stuff because we're going to do the sheath first so let's see last time i had it oh it opened up pretty easy there we go now what i do to kind of make it easier is i just i, I use my body heat you know i get this in my fingers i use my body heat you know that's why i don't use gloves I just get it on your hands and then just work it in you know you can also if you're wanting to hurry it up or if it's a winter and you know it's cold you know everything's kind of not malleable hair dryer is your best friend I've used that before I you know it's cold outside and I know I need my boots done I'll uh I'll get the hair dryer out to make it a little more quicker so again you know you just want to get this on your hands this stuff will not hurt you it's actually good for you. And that sheath I just showed you, uh, the bigger one that I said I paid $70 for, I did um, treat that with wicked wax. So that knife, or that one there, has already been treated. And it looks pretty good. It's been treated like that for quite a while, so. So if you look, it is getting darker. And that's what you want, you know. The leather will just soak this stuff up. It just, with the air conditioning on, this it'll take this stuff just a little bit to get kind of melted and easier to work with. But now it's like getting it all over my hands and then just working it in. Just work it in. Of course, I'm working around a tripod, two lights. You guys know how it is shooting these YouTube videos. You know. I ain't gonna tell you guys anything you don't already know. And what I did is I took a picture of this before. And then after we do this, I'll take a picture of it after and I'll put it at the end of the video. That way you guys can kind of see the difference and you know. It should just be like darker or whatnot. Of course you want to get your welt as well just get it everywhere don't be afraid of it don't be afraid of it because I'm gonna use this knife this knife right here I'm gonna I'm gonna put her to the test probably you know it isn't a $200 bark or a, should I say $300 bark, bark river you know I'm gonna take her out and we're gonna put her to the test you see guys see what Frank and uh, Peterbilt knife guy do with theirs and Saw grunts throwing his and but they they got the uh, larger one um, that has kind of the uh, I don't know the the sharpened uh, swedge on the back side of the blade you know the uh, probably the last two three inches of the blade of course you know they get them like that because they're gonna throw them and stab them into stuff a little easier I get mine of a more of a camping style because that's just more of what I do 
with my knives. You know, I'm, let's see, I'm not, you know, I like to hike and camp and fish and stuff like that. I, but I love watching them guys throw them knives. I do. I hope you guys know that. You guys watch the lives. <laughs> we have them on there, so. So you get, get the sides of the leather. Just let her get in there really good. Like I said, if it was winter, you know, we'd have to get the hair dryer out or whatnot. But we'll even get the inside here. I see some people wear gloves with this. And you can wear gloves while you're doing this. But I just find it's a little easier um, to get my body heat. To, for the, the wax to actually melt just from using my body heat, you know. It's windy and daylight's outside, fellas. Windy out there it is. All right. Oh, slipping and sliding. And you can kind of see spots where you know you need to probably get a little more or maybe you don't have enough and just kind of play it by sight and just work her all in but you guys can see how dark it's already getting yeah she's getting a little darker and what I'll do is kind of help this I'll probably take this sheath out this sheath is hanging on my fence out there so after I get this wax on here, I'll probably just take her right back out there, hang her on the fence again, and let the sun just let that stuff kind of soak in really, really good. Yeah, guys, don't forget about the live chat every Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. We had a good time. Um, the last one was brought to us by Georgia Adventure. He donated some stuff for a giveaway during the live. So Todd Carr from Canada will be getting shipped a leather Saudi slip. Well, actually a Saudi uh, mini copper lock. I think uh, mini tra I forget what all knives will fit in. But actually any knife that will fit in it, he can use in it. So it ain't got to be a case. And just something that will fit in But it's a nice looking slip, man. It was nice. I couldn't believe he sent that stuff for us to give away, but he's a great guy. Georgia Adventure does a lot for the community. So that last episode was brought to you by EDC Leatherworks. So if you haven't checked out his channel, or actually his channel, which is Georgia Adventure, be sure to go over there and check out his channel, and then check out his Etsy page, which is EDC Leatherworks on Etsy. Got a lot of great items on there. And if you want to watch our last live, in the banner, it's actually got the uh, the name of the Etsy page. I don't know why my dogs are barking, but all right, guys. So I think we got her waxed up pretty good here. You know, we still got some wax here. But once that's out in the sun and melts in, it'll just soak in there really good. Then you can also just to play it safe. I've you not know, use open offs. So I'll just cram her down in here too. I don't know why my dogs are barking like that, but. And of course you can feel, you can feel where the wax is as well, because it'll be kind of tacky to the touch. Then if you can get a chunk like that and run around your, your threads. All it'll do is help. It ain't going to hurt anything. All it's going to do is help. I don't know why my dogs are barking. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside. I'm going to hang it up in the sunlight and let her get a good soak. And then we'll see if we need to put more on it in certain places or whatnot. And like I said, I'll put some pictures up at the end of a before and after. All right, guys. I'm trying to move as fast as I can. So I'm going to take this out. All right, everybody, now we got the old which is the beeswax and coconut oil and what we're going to do is we're going to do the uh, we're going to do the handle now what I want to do also is while I'm thinking about this is I really wish I would have taped taped up the edge of this knife so let's get the sleeve 
actual blade sleeve. The last thing I want to do is cut myself. Like a dummy. <laughs> Alright, here's the old stuff. And we're going to use it on the wood. So I'm going to get a bunch on my fingers here. Just like I did with the sheath. Just Look at that. I'm just getting it in my hand here. This is stuff that's not going to hurt you. Alright. Okay. And it don't look like it's going to darken up the wood too much. Which I'm a fan of that dark wood. If you've seen, I'm going to show you that knife at Ken. Now this, again, this comes from Ken at Last Chance Knives. I'm going to show you something here real quick. If you guys haven't seen the blade he sent me to check out. Um, look at the handle on that son of a gun, would you? Man. There, that's a nice knife. I'm not going to lie. That's a nice knife. <laughs> he made that out of 01 tool steel. Uh, the handles, I believe, are desert ironwood. It's got hollow pins. Exposed tang for lanyard. Just uh, That is a spectacular knife. It's The style of it is perfect. Um, very similar to the design of uh, Bark River Canadian Special, I believe. is the name of it. Cause I got a few Bark Rivers, but I don't have that specific one. I'm more of a gunny guy. I actually sent him my Bark River gunny for him to check out. So, and guys, I'm trying to hurry this video as much as I can. I may even try to cut some of it down. Just not sure. Um, I'm just getting this as much as I can on this wood. And once you get this on here, you can also sand it off or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put her on here and let her soak in to the wood. All it's going to do in the end is protect it. I actually did a video before of me putting, I think, Wicked Wax on my Remington Cocobolo uh, Jumbo Trapper. It's wood on the Cocobolo wood to help protect it. So, you guys are probably hearing my furnace or my air conditioner go, but I accidentally left my door open to my room here. There's just all kinds of noises going on. I'm going to try to shut that real quick. Yeah, we shut that door, so hopefully the noise ain't too bad. Now we got dogs barking again because they're playing. So yeah, you can feel this. Once you get enough on here, you can just feel it sliding a lot easier. So yeah. Went fishing this morning, only caught one small one. It was hot. Man, it was so hot I had a heat stroke. I'm going to be honest with you. I was in a spot over a hill and the sun was on my back and then the sun was coming up off the pond right into my face. And, uh, boy, it was hot. I'm not going to lie. My boy and my wife was with me and my son wore jeans and boots. And I told him not to. I was like, you're going to burn up, man. He said, nah, I'm tough. <laughs> and, uh, Boy, um, he said when we were in the car on the way home, he said, I really wish I wore shorts. So, yeah. All right, guys, we got this handle pretty much soaked. So, what I'm going to do with this as well, I'm going to take it out in the garage and let it sit in the heat for a little while and just let her soak in. And then we'll come back at the end and give an overall review. All right, guys. All Hold right, time. so here we are. This is after treating it with a conditioner. Letting it hang outside for an hour in the sunlight so you don't get the tacky feeling anymore. It's pretty much the wood soaked all that in. So hasn't the leather. So right now I'm happy with this one coat. I'm just going to leave her as is right now. That'll protect that. That'll condition that leather. It'll make the wood grain even protected. So guys, there it is. Just an easy way. Go get you some wax, use it on your wood handles, use it on your leather sheaths. Uh, you could also use open offs, uh, wicked wax, snow seal, whatever you like to use. Make your own concoction like Ken did. He used beeswax, coconut oil, and olive oil. So guys, this is it. This is a finished product. Now it's time to go out and uh, hopefully this week I can get a video. I'm on vacation this week, so hopefully this week I can get me a video of me taking this out, do some feather sticking, trying to start a fire with this uh, carbon steel blade. Alright guys, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and uh, 
don't don't uh, forget to hit that notification bell for all the things we got coming on. We got the happy hour live chat every Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. Um, tag along for that. It's a great time. Got some more gifts to give away this weekend from Mr. Georgia Adventure down there at EDC Leatherworks. So stay sharp and stay strong. Yeah.